we are just two days away from perhaps the most watched boxing event of all time. The anticipation of Fight Week is building to a crescendo. Netflix and most viable promotions present Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson and Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano too. And this is the press conference. Eat everything he has. He can't hurt me. I'm ready to go in the ring right this second and go in there and dismantle him. Oh my God. Sorry, Mike. I, I love you, buddy, but it's my time. The gods know it. I know it. And you're going to know it. This is Dallas, Texas. The AT&T Stadium will play host to the biggest boxing event of the year and most likely the biggest boxing event of all time. And to get things underway for Fight Week, we're coming to you live from the Toyota Music Factory just down the road from Dallas Cowboys Stadium, where limited tickets are still available at SeatGeek.com. And my name is Wade Flemons, back with the crew, my two illustrious co-hosts to my left, the son of the baddest man on the planet, Amir Tyson, and to his left, a bad man in his own right, UFC welterweight legend and former champion, Tyron Woodley. Gentlemen, how do we feel today? The, the atmosphere is electric, everyone's hyped, the music's great. I just can't wait to get it on. Like, my my hype for Friday is even going, baby. crazier, man. t would talk to me. I mean, wait on paper, we know that this moment was going to be special. But yesterday, the atmosphere that was set, we all knew we were blessed to be a part of this, so I'm excited yep. to see what today brings and definitely the fight. Stars on display all of yesterday, but we got to talk about this main event, and we're going to start with the baddest man on the planet, Mike Tyson. I want to know, Tyron, your former champion, you got to see Mike in a workout that I don't think he's ever experienced, an open workout. He treated it so serious yesterday. What did you see? I mean, what I saw, he was relaxed. He was having fun with it. I expected him to show us and prove to us that he was in shape to go out there and try to do a full workout so he can get rid of all the naysayers. But then I saw some smiles. I saw him talking to Rafael Cadera, and he really showed that this moment, he understands big moments. He created these moments, right? He made the big pay-per-view boxing, and now it's time to see him get in the face, do the press conference, and we see what they got going on in the weigh-ins. Amir, you looked like yesterday you had something no one else knew. What's and up? It, was, it was able to be shown. What did you see from your dad yesterday? All, all I know is that he was built for this moment. You know, Customato, born and bred him for this moment. The whole world's watching. And he still has so much in him, and I can't wait for him to display it Friday. Everybody's excited about Mike. We all know that. But one El Gallo de Dorado is his opponent in the main event. And speaking of El Gallo, it's a fitting name. Yesterday, Amir, he came in with the rooster on his head. You know, he, he's the biggest troll, he's funny. This is why a lot of people like him, pay attention to him, love him or hate him. He's always gonna bring some type of entertainment to it. You know, he showed he showed he had power and he looks like he's ready to go too. And T Wood, you've been a part of a Jake fight before. You know that he's gonna bring the antics every time. Anything you saw yesterday from the workout? I mean, he's a risk taker. Anybody fighting Mike Tyson, sorry, is a risk taker. Somebody that's knocked so many people out with every single hand, every single punch, thrown the man, right? To put yourself in position to go in there and fight that person, you got to be a risk taker. So I think he's minimizing the moment with the antics, having fun with it, until he walks in there and recognizes that it's going to be real. Speaking of minimizing the moment, there is no way to minimize this rematch that we have in the co-main event between Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. And they took center stage in what people are calling the people's main event. Yesterday at their open workout, Tamir, what did you see from Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano? I want a little both. You know, I saw her timing. I saw the pad work with her trainer. I, I just can't wait for that fight. Amanda looked ferocious. She looked like she was ready to go to. It might be the fight of the year again. It might be the fight of the night. We'll have to figure out and find out. And T. Wood, Katie Taylor won the first fight. Still with a chip on her shoulder. Don't think maybe she's getting the credit she deserves for that win. 
Yesterday, it looked like she was out to prove a point, throwing some real big power shots in the open workout. I love a fighter with a chip on his shoulder, right? There's no way, there's no better way to go out there than to victor victoriously prove it by devastatingly going out there and having a crazy performance that everybody talks about on Monday, right? This is her moment. This is her opportunity to shut out all the naysayers. This is also Amanda's opportunity to try to get in there and get the victory and maybe try to get a rubber match out of this. We saw Amanda yesterday at the open workouts, and she looked... Big and strong, and we know she's coming up in weight. Obviously, the rematch is on her mind. Revenge is on her mind because she didn't win that first one as much as a lot of people maybe say that she should have. Amir, what did you see from me yesterday? You know, you heard me yesterday. I thought she came out victorious in that fight, seven rounds of three. But she's focused, you know, just feel for her. She thinks she won. The judges gave it to um, Taylor, but she's had to prove it in the ring. Let's go. What does Amanda have to do differently this time around? Like I said yesterday, she has to use head motion, right? Anytime you have a fight and you take a lesson, right, you can go back and say, what did I do wrong? How can I change that? She really didn't have a bad fight. She's not going to look back at that fight and be mad at herself and think I left something in her. It's just a few small technical things, maybe a couple more punches thrown. I think a couple less punches landed on her was a difference maker where she would have came out victorious. I think that everybody is going to watch that one highly anticipated. But listen, this is a card full of superstars. And if you're not in that co-main or that main, you're going to make a name for yourself. You want to steal the show. T. Wood, tell me a fight you're looking for on this undercard. Shadejia Green, smooth Ooh. green versus Melinda Watpool. I think she's matured. She's earned this position to put herself in there. It's within grasp. Let's see what she does. Amir, where are you looking at? I, I, I like Mario Barrios. That's the most prestigious fight when it comes to men. It's the only title fight, so it's high-level boxing. I think it's going to be a war, but, you know, they have to showcase that themselves. Showcase is the word of the day. All fighters are going to do so, but before we get to the fight, we have a press conference to get to, folks, and the fourth member of our team is standing by, the great Ariel Helwani. Good evening, Texas. Yeah, howdy everyone. Ah, it's such a great honor for me to be here. This is surreal stuff, my friends. Absolutely surreal. For this once in a lifetime, unprecedented, who would have ever thought we'd be here just a year ago, right? Who would have ever thought we'd be here for this kind of card in this kind of setting on this kind of platform? Not just any kind of platform, the biggest streaming platform in the world. Yes, I'm assuming you've all heard of Netflix. I'm assuming the vast majority, if not all of you, are subscribers to Netflix. My friends, on Friday, November 15th, two days from today, Netflix enters the world of combat sports. For the very first time, Netflix will be airing for its 280 million plus subscribers, a live combat sports event. We have been talking about this for quite some time. Will they, won't they, will they, won't they? They will in just two days time. And we all knew when, if Netflix would get into the ring, so to speak, we knew it would have to be an unprecedented event, a once in a lifetime event. And I think that is what we have on our hands in just two days time. It's going down at AT&T Stadium. They're expecting about 70,000 fans by the time it's all said and done, this will be the largest gate for any boxing event outside of Las Vegas. Massive, massive stuff. And it's the kind of thing, like I said, a year ago, two years ago, we never could have dreamed of. It's the return of the baddest man on the planet, the inimitable, the often imitated, never duplicated, the icon, one of the most famous athletes of the past century, the one and only Mike Tyson. 58 years young, returning to the ring for the first time in about four years, going up against the guy who was in the co-headliner for his last fight. Remember that in November of 2020 against Roy Jones? Yes, there was a young man on that card who went up against a former New York Nick, Nate Robinson. He knocked him out, and since then, it has been a tremendous ride, a ride unlike any other. He made his pro boxing debut just about five years ago, a little less at this point, and every step of the way, he has uh, opened a lot of eyes. He is no doubt very polarizing, but certainly one of the most talked about athletes, influencers, celebrities in the world today. He is, of course, Jake Paul. Yes, on Friday, November 15th, in two days, on Netflix, 280 million plus in front of the biggest audience live and around the world. 
we will be getting Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. The beauty of this, though, is that there is no pay-per-view attached to it. There's no extra cost. There's no nothing. If you are a Netflix subscriber, you are getting this fight. Sit back, relax. You watch, you turn it on, it's right there in front of you. Oh, by the way, there are three episodes of a tremendous countdown series that are already there waiting for you. If you haven't watched them, if you're one of the few, it's top 10 since it came out just a few days ago. Incredible theater. Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. Now, if that's not your cup of tea, fine. How about the co-main event? About two and a half years ago, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano made history. Madison Square Garden, I was lucky enough to be there as a media member. Till this day, it's one of the greatest scenes that I've ever witnessed live. I've been to many events at MSG. Shout out to the New York Knicks. I've never heard MSG like that before. I've never heard the Mecca sound the way in which it did when the pride of Puerto Rico went up against the pride of Ireland. It was so close, still disputed till this day. We knew they'd have to run it back. We knew there would have to be an amazing scene and setting for them to run it back. We get that rematch, this time with higher stakes attached, super lightweight titles, Saturday, co-main event, excuse me, Friday, old habits die hard, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano, two for the super lightweight undisputed titles. Amazing stuff. I can't wait to get into it. I can't wait to see all the individuals up here. Enough of my talking. No one wants to hear from me. You want to see the fighters. You want to hear from them. So let's get into it, shall we? Let us say hello to all the fighters who are here. All 14 that will be making history on Friday evening. We begin with Abel Ramos. Say hello, everyone, to Abel Ramos, who is going up and trying to snatch away the WBC welterweight title from Mario Barrios. Make some noise for Mario Barrios. Outside of the United States, there is no country on the planet that Netflix is bigger in than in Brazil. And so I know all my friends in Brazil are very excited that one of their own, the influencer turned boxer, Winderson Nunes is on this card. Let's say, boa noche to Winderson Nunez. I hope I got that right. I've been working on that all day. His opponent, the pride of India, also pretty big country. The face of Indian boxing is the one and only Niraj Goyat. He tried to pick a fight with Jake Paul. Now he's on his team. He's one of the newest members of MVP. Shout out to Canada. We've got two great Canadian fighters on this card. First up, let's say hello to Melinda Watpool. Melinda Watpool trying to become a champion on Friday night. She's going up against the super middleweight sensation of the MVP stable, Shadeja Green. Yes, the pride of Patterson, New Jersey. Armando Casamonica is taking this fight on very short notice, but he's looking to do what his opponent did back in July, and that is shock the world. Say hello to the pride of Italy, Armando Casamonica. I mentioned Canadian fighters, Lucas Body. This man has the knockout of the year as of right now. If you haven't seen it, look at what he did to H2O Sil back in July. And let's give some props to Australia as well. Australian boxing, Australian fighting, doing big things these days. Dana Coolwell on the card, looking to make some noise as well, looking to pull off an upset. A massive opportunity for him, and he is going up against the pride of Brownsville, Brooklyn, Bruce. Shu Shu, Carrington, one of the best prospects in the world of boxing. All right, now let us say hello to the two women who will be making history on Friday night. First, let us say hello to the pride of Carolina, Puerto Rico, the first ever undisputed champion to hail from that great island. Seven division world champion, the current unified featherweight world champion. She is looking to right the wrong from two and a half years ago. She is the pride of not only Puerto Rico, but let's be honest, New York as well. She is the real deal. Amanda Serrano. Greatness requires sacrifice, and I sacrificed a lot to be where I'm at now. now. Amanda, the real deal. I'm always pushing myself and just truly dedicated to the sport of boxing. I learned a lot, and now I know what I need to do. When I win, I will be pound for pound the best. One of the best fighters, regardless of gender on the planet today, the one and only Amanda Serrano. Make some noise.
for the living legend competing in her 51st pro fight. Unbelievable stuff. Now, she is going up against the one who introduced women's boxing to the Olympic Games, 2012 Olympic gold medalist. In my humble opinion, the greatest of all time as of right now. She won back in 2022 at Madison Square Garden. She is the patron saint of the Emerald Isle. She is the brave bomber. She is the undisputed super lightweight champion, the one and only Katie Taylor. The last fight was an epic fight. The female fight of the year! I think the next one's gonna be exactly the same. Wanna see the champion person. They fought for history! I'm just a better fighter, and the best in me always be the best in Amanda. Lone Star State, you are in the presence of greatness. Make some noise for the great Katie Taylor! All right, and now we move along. First up, one half of the main event on Friday night. The face of Most Valuable Promotions, a man who about three years ago said, you know what, wouldn't it be fun if I fought Mike Tyson? Let's be honest, his own team laughed at him. They're not laughing now because he's two days away from fighting Mike Tyson. Yes, it is happening. He is the one and only, the former problem child, now known as simply El Gallo. He is breaking records, he is breaking barriers, he is disrupting the fight game each and every time he enters the ring. He is the one and only, Jake Paul! Most follow boxer, the most viral KO in period. I'm truly gonna show the world that I outboxed Mike Tyson. Crazy. <laughs> they say he's the baddest man on the planet, so let's find out. Jake looking to end it right here, right now. The new king of violence, and his name is Jake Paul. Make some noise for the great Jake Paul, everyone. Listen, the word icon, superstar, trailblazer, all that gets used very loosely these days. But this man, his style, impetuous. His defense, impregnable. Often imitated, never duplicated, one of one. They don't make him like him anymore. The pride of Brownsville, arguably the most famous boxer of the last 50 plus years, returning to the ring for the first time in about four years, the one and only, the baddest man on the planet, Iron Mike Tyson. Hey, listen, right? It was good while it lasted for Jake. The most brutal, the most vicious, the most You better. You better. One more time. Everyone together. The baddest man on the planet. Now and forever. Iron Mike Tyson. All right. Let's get into things. Mike. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Th thank you. Fight week. You haven't been in one of these for about four years. You did an open workout yesterday. Everyone's asking you why, how. Give us the reason. Forget about all that. Old news at this point. Everyone wants to know what's going through your mind. Is the old Mike back? Is vintage Mike back? Let us know. Are you talking to me right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm back, yeah. You're the star. I'm just happy to be here. I love you too, thank you. Jake, there have been moments in the buildup to this fight where it did feel like the old Mike was back, vintage Mike. I'm not talking, you know, late 2000s Mike, I'm talking like, you know, 1989 Mike Tyson. You're the guy that he's talking about. You're the opponent, you're the guy that's gonna be facing off with him. You're watching this, you're listening to this. What goes through your mind when you hear him go into that dark place? Yeah, it's cute, you know, I fear no man, so I want him to be that old savage Mike. He says he's gonna kill me, is that, is that what you're gonna do, Mike? Because I'm ready, I, I want that killer. I want the hardest match possible Friday night, and I want there to be no excuses from everyone at home when 
I knock him out. So is that, is that what you're going to bring? Homicidal? I'm just ready. That's all I can say. I'm just ready. I don't think anyone has ever referred to Mike Tyson's talk as cute before. That is a first. Mike, the line that I can't get enough of, the one that I keep watching over and over again, when you and your team were watching Jake after the Mike Perry fight, you said the difference between me and him is that he's a manufactured killer. He's, he's the killer that papers and TV made. I'm a natural born killer. That's what you said. That, that we felt in our bones. That's what everyone who grew up watching you remembers. Can you expand on that? Why is he manufactured and why are you for real? Yeah, that's what I said, that's what I said. Yeah, I was just wondering if you can expand on it. I mean, can you give me... It's just what it's I just said. It's just that, all right, that's, that's cool. Uh, when you hear that, do you agree with that, Jake? Is there something to that? Whatever he wants to think, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but the deadliest weapon on the planet is manufactured and that's a nuke. All right, I do believe that is accurate. Um, and what is going on with your ear over there, Jake, if I could just ask that? I'm not getting my shit bit off on Friday night, so I got my diamond spiked ear covers right there. All right. Uh, let me turn my attention to the two women competing in the co-main event. We'll start with the champion, the undisputed champion, the patron saint of the Emerald Isle, the great Katie Taylor. Always an honor to be in her presence. Here we are, Katie. I know you hate this stuff. You hate the face-to-faces, you hate the press conferences, you hate the talk. The main talk has been, though, her, Jake, her team have all said she deserved to win at Madison Square Garden. What do you have to do to put an end to that talk? Um, well, I believe that I won the last five, clearly, and um, I just got to go in there Friday night and, be and beat her again. Um, I put my body through the trenches over these last few months. An absolute privilege to be here on the same card as a legend in the sport, and um, it's absolutely an amazing opportunity. Um, that we both have, and I just can't wait to step in there and showcase what I can do again and get a, a, another win. You know, uh, Amanda, you guys have you know broken so many barriers. You in particular, you've broken so many barriers, and MSG was historic. This is a different type of history. Biggest platform, two women fighting in the co-main event under these two gentlemen. Do you take that pressure on your shoulders going into Friday? Are you representing women's boxing as well, or is that a mistake? Can you not think of it that way? Well, first of all, I would like to say, Ariel, how are you doing right now? I'm doing great. I, I, know, you, I know you're in a tough spot right no, now. No, <laughs> Us New Yorkers, we got to look out for each other. Thank you. Okay, okay. That. No, the pressure is always um, there when you're trying to be a face of, of a sport, but I feel like I'm not the f just the face. There's a lot of us that come together. We made history together. I made history m multiple times, and I just have to go out there and make sure that I perform like I did the last time and women won. Is there a lesson that you took away among the many, but maybe an overarching one, because it was so close, because you didn't eventually get the nod, a lesson that you will look to apply come Friday in this fight? Listen, I'm gonna do what I do best, and that's come to fight. We appreciate that, can't wait for it as well. Uh, by the way, Mike, can I ask you one more? Perhaps uh, there, there's more to this. A lot of the talk going into this fight has been about your history, about your upbringing, perhaps some new fans learning about your history for the first time. Um, a, big, a big story, a big part of your history, of course, your first trainer, the great, the late great Customato. What do you think he would say of this spectacle going down on Friday? He'd be very happy. What do you think he would tell you about how to beat Jake Paul? He would be very happy. All right. Uh, let us go to the uh, media. I do believe there is some media here. We'll go to my man, Andreas Hale, up first. By the way, let us know where you're coming from and obviously who your question is being addressed to. Yes, sir. Andreas Hale from ESPN. Jake, this question is for you. We know this fight is eight rounds, two minutes, but is there any chance this goes to a decision or does this have to end in a knockout? No, someone's getting put to sleep. It's going to be a war, and we're both heavy hitters. It's not going the full 16 minutes. Question for Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. Mike. The question is, Jake Paul, the biggest clown within boxing. If Mike lets you... No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to Andreas. Go back to Andreas. Go back to Andreas. Is that Tony Bellew? That looks like Tony Bellew. It does? Is that Tony Bellew or is it Darren Till? Andreas, keep going. Yes, sir. Now, what is this? A Fisher Price microphone? 
I can't. I actually can't tell if it's Tony Bellew. Is it? Okay, Andreas, keep going. All right, my man, chill. No, legit. Is it Tony Bellew? I can't tell. Is it Tony Bellew? Fifty extra pounds. Okay, Andreas, go ahead. Yes, sir. Andreas, go ahead. Mike Tyson. Mike, this question is for you. Given everything that you've gone through in your life and your career, you're coming back to the ring at the age of 58. How big would this be for your life to pull off this epic comeback and beat Jake Paul on Friday night? I'm just ready to fight. You know, I've, I've said everything I had to say. There's nothing else to say. I'm just looking forward to fighting. All right, thank you, Andreas. I do believe we have uh, another question right over here. Hey guys, Joey Hayden, Dallas Morning News. My question is for Mike. Mike, when you look around at the stage around multiple title fights, one of the most anticipated women's fights in history behind you, there's a lot of people that say this fight between you and Jake isn't to the level of professional boxing or what most people perceive as professional boxing. Who better to ask than Mike Tyson? How does this fight line up for you? What, how does it feel? Well, um, the people speak for itself. I don't even have to ask them. All right, thank you very much, sir. Biggest live gate in US boxing history outside of Las Vegas, numbers don't lie. So people want to see this and that's an amazing accomplishment. Credit to Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano and Mike and everyone on the card as well. Naraj, Mario Barrios, Winderson, everybody, Bruce Garen, every, literally everyone, Lucas, everyone. So we all did this together and this is a, a statement that we had the biggest live gate outside of Vegas in US boxing history. Uh, actually, I did want to ask Niraj a question, if I can. I know uh, about a year ago, you were, you were crashing the party in Puerto Rico trying to pick a fight with this man. Now you joined MVP, and you'll be going up against Winderson in this anticipated bout. Why, why the switch? Why did you go from wanting to fight Jake to teaming up with him? Uh, so, Winderson Nunes, and after that, Jake Paul, before this KSI, I'm here for my country. I'm here for my country, younger boxer. I want to tell them nothing is impossible when I start boxing 18 years back. So I had a dream to sharing stage with Mike Tyson, and I'm here today. So this all are in my way. He's also in my way. Oh, wow, OK. So I guess he's, uh, you, you're, you still have him in your crosshairs. You still want to fight him. Yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. I'm. I'm gonna go. To, we're, I mean, we're on the. We're on the same team, and I respect him and all that. But I'm. I'm gonna go to India and beat his ass for sure. Okay. Uh, well, for Winderson, if I can ask, you'll be fighting Naraj. Uh, are you impressed with what he's done? He talks a big game. Look at the. Look at the schedule that he just laid out. And I know you're a little newer to the fight game. Are you impressed with your opponent, Niraj Goyad? And I do believe your interpreter is here as well. Então, essa pergunta é para você agora. Você acabou de ouvir aqui o Neiraj falar sobre essa lista de pessoas que ele quer lutar. Eu sei que você é um pouco mais novo nessa caminhada de lutas e eu queria saber, você está impressionado com o papo dele, com o histórico dele? Como que você se sente com relação a essa luta? Eu me sinto como se eu tivesse mentido no currículo e tivesse me assentado no, aceitado no emprego depois de ver todas essas pessoas aqui de peso. I feel like as if I lied on my resume and I just ended up here in the midst of this huge group here, amazing group tonight. That's amazing. I appreciate the humility. Okay, let's go back to the media. Hi, Mr. Tyson, I just wanna ask a little question. Can you share us why did you say this sentence? The fear of losing is too much fighting than dying. And what would you lose if you lose this fight? Thank you. I'm not going to lose. <laughs> but but just, you say that in the last minute of the second. I am not going to lose. Did you hear what I said? Thank you. That's, that's the one I was talking about earlier. Uh, back to the media, right over here. So, uh, Colm Keyes from the Irish Independent in Dublin, and my question is for Katie Taylor. 
Katie, you were involved in that epic Madison Square Garden fight with Amanda Serrano. Uh, halfway through it, you looked in a little bit of trouble, you finished strong. What was your thoughts at the end of that fifth round? Um, I think for every single fighter, we're, all, we're always prepared for, for moments like that. Uh, that's, that's why we train so hard. Um, when you're in shape, when you're fit, you, you recover so well from those moments. And um, I take a lot of reassurance and a, and a lot of confidence from that because I took our bigger shots and I wasn't stumbled, I wasn't moved. And I, I won the second half of that fight. So I take a lot of reassurance going into the rematch um, because of that. So, yeah. Uh, if I could ask Katie a follow-up. Uh, Jake said in an interview earlier this week that uh, your longtime promoter and friend Eddie Hearn will actually be in your corner. I think that's a first for him. Is that is that accurate? Um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I believe Jake said that, right? Jake, did you say that? That's what they submitted through the promotion. It doesn't surprise me because he's a cloud chasing bitch. So yeah. Oh, I thought that would be a cool scene. I thought that would be cool, different, but uh, we'll find out on Friday. Another reason to tune in. Back to the questions we go. Yeah, hi, uh, Kira Mulvaney from Boxing Scene. This is for Katie and Amanda, and it's a question about legacy. You know, I would not be surprised to find 10 years from now uh, female champions talking about wanting to be inspired to take up the sport by watching what you two did at Madison Square Garden two years ago. And I'm curious whether you guys think a lot about your legacy, what you mean for girls and young women around the world, and how can you build on that on Friday? Well, definitely legacy is very important, but my goal is to motivate and inspire these young girls, the new generation in this sport, that you can do anything you put your mind to. If you believe in yourself, have a great team, you can go far. And um, like I've been saying, we don't, when I say how much I make, it's not bragging. It's to show these women that we can make it. We're capable of making it. We're capable of breaking records and just strive to, for excellence and you will achieve it. Yeah, um, I think for, for me, that's uh, the greatest part about this journey as well, is uh, just being able to, to inspire and impact the next generation of female fighters. And uh, when I started boxing as a nine or 10 year old, there's no female fighter at all that I knew in, in the boxing gyms in Ireland, but every single boxing gym I walk into now at home is packed with female fighters. And that to me is, um, that's what legacy is all about really. And um, I think what me and um, Amanda have done over these last few years, inspiring that, that generation of young, young fighters is the best thing we, we could leave behind in, in this sport. It's an absolute privilege. I'm dying to ask Shushu a question. Shushu, you're one of the, the top rising stars in the sport. And I'm gonna put you on the spot here. I hope you don't mind. You were on a top ranked card. I believe you were at the theater attached to Madison Square Garden and you cut a promo in honor of this man who also hails from Brownsville one of the most infamous Mike Tyson promos. You got it for us? It was incredible. You freaking nailed it on that night. And I think that's what led to him calling you and telling you how much he appreciated that. Spit some bars for us. <laughs> I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston, I'm Jack Dempsey. There's nobody like me from Nearclaw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want you his children. Praise be to God. Yeah, well done. Well done. Mike, can, can I ask, ask when you heard that from another young man from Brooklyn? What yes, did that mean? Yes, he is very, very eloquent, but that day I was off my meds. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it mean to you, Shushu, to be on a card with a legend like Mike Tyson who comes from the same part of the world as you? Man, it means the world to me. It's honestly something that I would have never thought about. You know, I, around, around the time I started boxing, he was already retired, not even thinking about him coming back around and doing this here. And this is honestly just a dream come true. I want to give a big thanks to Mike Tyson for being able to have me on his card, MVP, everybody else, you know, a part of this whole situation. And I'm just ready to put on the show, man. I'm ready to put on the show and show everybody what the Shoo Shoo Show has to deliver. I love it. Looking forward to it very much. I do have to ask a question before we get back to the media, to Lucas Body. I'm still in awe of what you did back in July. Let's be honest, my man, great record, but I think that was the H2O Silv show. And you went out there and pulled off, in my opinion, the best knockout of the year. If we get something better than that in the next two months, God help us all, because that was the most vicious knockout that I've ever seen live in front of a boxing ring. How has your life changed since pulling that off back in July? 
Well, I'm a part of this incredible event, historic event. I'm honored to be here. It's an amazing card on Netflix for the first time. And uh, knockouts is what I do. So you guys are in for a show. Can't wait. Let's go back to the media. Jack Big from The Sun in London. Question for Amanda. It's been two years since that great fight with, with Katie. You've obviously had fights since then while we wait for the rematch. How, how tough was the wait to get to this point uh, while, while, while you waited to get the, the, the shot at revenge? Well, thank you for asking because a lot of people don't acknowledge I am going up three divisions, um, being the unified featherweight champion. But it's always hard for me and uncomfortable when I have to leave my weight class where I feel comfortable at. So um, just I have to eat a lot more, um, a lot more protein, a lot more carbs, just to make sure that I feel good at the weight. Um, I'm hoping that I can make at least the 138 tomorrow, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I'm chasing greatness, and that's going up three divisions to face Katie Taylor once again, and I will be victorious. Question for me to Armando. Armando, I know you're taking this fight on somewhat short notice. I also understand, correct me if I'm wrong, I hear you're from one of the most feared families in Rome. Can you tell us about the Casamonico uh, lineage, the family history? Why do they say this about you and who you're representing? Armando, leggi quello che hai scritto e volevano anche chiederti un po' della tua famiglia. Allora, prima di tutto, voglio ringraziare MVP Promotion, Jack Paul e Mike Tyson per l'opportunità che mi hanno dato. E tutto il loro team <coughs> ci siamo sentiti subito a casa. Questo è il mio primo incontro in America, negli Stati Uniti. Complimenti al nuovo presidente americano, speriamo in anni di pace per tutti. Al mio avversario, Lucas Badi, canadese, faccio i miei migliori auguri. Non sarà un incontro facile per nessuno di due. Abbiamo stili e provenienze completamente diversi. Il ring ci unirà per questi dieci round. Io porto Roma con me, la mia storia, la mia famiglia, che ringrazio. Anche la palestra Quadraro Box, il mio, il mio coach Silvano Setaro, il mio manager Marco e Jack Micheli, pugile italiano in cui ci sono cresciuto. Sicuramente sarà un incontro senza sconti, da non perdere per tanti che mi seguono e lo seguiranno da casa in Italia. Non sono abituato a perdere, soprattutto a mollare. Ci sarà da sudare. Grazie. Se grazie, avete grazie. domande sono qui. Bellissimo. So, so Armando is saying, first of all, he wants to thank MVP Promotion, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul for the opportunity. He's got a great team. Thank you, Jake. Really, they, they made us really feel at home. It's Armando, um, first event in the States, and uh, he wants to congratulate the new president. He wishes peace, peace to the world. Amen. Grazie mille. Uh, to Lucas, uh, he says good luck to you. Um, it's not going to be an easy one for you. You know, we come from uh, different worlds, um, different families, different, uh, you know, the way that we've been brought up. But you say you're going to be united for those 10 rounds. You're going to share a moment. You're never going to forget. So he wishes all the best. And he said everybody to keep watching this on Friday. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Mike. Can't wait. Back to the media, to the left. Hey, guys. Ryan Morick here with Fox News. This is for Mike. You say you're not going to lose, but the odds say differently. Uh, how disrespected does that make you feel, and why do you think you are the underdog? Thank you. Hey, um, <laughs> I'm fine with everything. I'm fine with everything. Appreciate it, my friend. On this side. Hi there. Um, my name's Joe Barlow. I work with uh, The Chive, and um, this is a question for Mike and Jake. Uh, we've really appreciated your shit-talking of each other, um, but we thought there was enough negativity in the world, so we were curious if you had something nice to say about one another. Well... I'm getting mood? Wow. Anything come to mind, Jake? Well, I think he's gonna look good in the picture when he's on the canvas and I'm standing over him. Anything come to mind, Mike? 
I'll take that as a no. Uh, question for the champion, Mario Barrios. Big opportunity presented to you by MVP. Uh, this is a massive, massive shot. Everyone's talking about your belt. You have the glamour belt in the welterweight division. When you got the call about this opportunity to defend your title on this platform, on Netflix, what went through your mind? Um, I, I, was, uh, I was stoked as soon as I got the, uh, you know, the, the call for this opportunity. You know, big shout out to MVP Promotions, you know, to Jake and uh, Mike, you know, making this happen. Uh, there's no doubt about it. This is one of the biggest boxing, you know, events going on. And uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Happy to be defending my title in my home state of Texas. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm 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 just, I'm just ready, you know, to uh, I'm just ready to get this this week over with, and you know, uh, step in the ring on Friday. Uh, speaking of titles, can I ask Shadeja a question? This is a chance for you to to capture that belt that you know not that long ago you tried, and now here you are again. What were the lessons that you learned from that first title fight that you're looking to not replicate on Friday? Um, so many lessons, just the main one. Um, first and foremost, I'm just honored to be here and share such a historic card. But just embrace the moment and show up and show out. Um, be proud that you're here and, and just dominate. Can't wait for it. All right, back to the media. Uh, my name is Kevin Garcia. I'm with Fight Hype. And my first question is for Jake. Um, Jake, you know, most boxers, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't name one of their first 10 opponents. Obviously, you've put on a lot of shows. Um, we're at a spectacle right now, a really big event. What do you say to the people who criticize your decision making when most boxers, we don't follow their career at this point? Yeah, I'm blessed to be in the position I am to be highly criticized. That just means I'm doing something right. And no one has had a boxing career like mine. It'll be studied and, and judged, but I've risen to the top in four years because I've taken risks. I was the underdog all the way up until Nate Robinson, and that's something that people don't remember, or don't give any credit to, but I put it on the line against some of the best in the sport every single time, and that's why I'm here on Netflix against the biggest name in boxing right now. Thank you. And then I... My second question is for Amanda. Amanda, I was watching the face-off between you and Katie, you know, uh, in the promo for the build-up to this event. And I noticed when the question was posed about three minutes, you seemed pretty assertive on your position. You know, you wanted to do it. Katie didn't seem as assertive. She said her team uh, had been informed, but she wasn't. Do you believe that? Um, listen, if she really wanted the three minutes, I think she would have suggested herself, knowing that I asked the first time, she probably would be like, hey, she doesn't, she's not interested in doing it 3-12, 12-3 this time. But listen, it is what it is. I'm going out there fighting 10-2. Um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have less time to go out there and throw a lot of punches. Thank you. Uh, Jake, dare I ask, what do you make of Mike's demeanor tonight? Man, I, I just, there's a lot of shit talk online saying you're going to kill me, and, and it's just nothing in person. It's, I don't know. It, it's uh, pretty boring, pretty fucking boring. Do you think these are mind games? I don't know, man. It, it's not working, whatever these games are. It's not going to change the result of what happens Friday night. I want to ask a question to Dana Coolwell. Deadly, they call him. Uh, you are from a, a long ways from here. I want to try to get this right. You are from the Manunjali tribe. Did I get that right? Close enough? Uh, yeah. yeah, Manunjali. Yes, all the way in Australia. Uh, yeah. Could you tell us about your background and, and uh, how unique it is for you to get this opportunity? Uh, yeah, I'm a proud Australian, indigenous Australian, I'm representing all of Australia, and I'm just happy to be part of such an, uh, something so big, such a massive card on Netflix. and. Um, Getting this opportunity, yeah, I'm just ready to show out and uh, put on a great performance and show why I belong here on the world stage as well. Your thoughts on Chushu? A lot of people calling him one of the top prospects in all of boxing. Are you as impressed with him? Yeah, he's a great fighter, um, and I'm, I'm expecting the best Bruce uh, come fight night, and that'll bring the best, uh, best Dana, and yeah, I'm ready to put on a great performance. If I can also ask a question to uh, Melinda, uh, this is a big opportunity for you, coming all the way from Canada. I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you've been offered this fight in the past a couple times. The timing wasn't right, you said no. Why is the timing right for you to fight Shadeja? First of all, I just want to thank Jake Paul and MVP Promotions for putting this on. Uh, there's not only going to be one great female fight on this card, but two, so I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, yeah, we turned down the fight a couple times. You know. I was just starting in my pro career and I wasn't ready. We don't take fights that we're not ready for. And mentally, physically, I'm ready now. When I saw the posting for this fight, 
I thought, hmm, maybe they'll ask me to be on this show. And maybe two days later, I got the notice. So I'm here, I'm ready, we've been training hard. And it's great to see uh, women's boxing on a big stage like this, and to see uh, another Canadian boxer as well on this uh, platform. Best of luck to you. Back to the media. Yes, this is Jacob Dedamore with the ticket in Dallas. This question is for Jake. Jake, you were just talking about your career and how it's grown, and you've said in the past that you want to be taken seriously as a boxer. So if that is your goal, when can we expect you to start fighting legitimate contending fighters in your given weight class? I think you're the same dumbass from the other event. I asked that same, same dumbass question. And you didn't answer And you're, and you're si sitting here disrespecting Mike Tyson to his face once again. I asked you, you a question. Do you not think that he's a serious boxer? He walks away. All right, back to the media over here. Chris Beltran, House of Highlights. This is from Mike. Mike, do you see yourself fighting again after this fight? And if you could pick someone to fight Jake next, who would you pick? I'm just interested in this fight right here at the moment. And who would you pick to fight Jake next if you could? I'm not talking about fighting anybody, only Jake. Thank you. Uh, Abel, can I ask you a question? An opportunity for you to become WBC welterweight champion on Friday. Mario is tough, obviously. You're looking to make your own kind of history. In your opinion, based on what you've seen from him, especially as of late, what are the keys to beating Mario on Friday? Well, um, Mario's a, a very, very tough opponent. You know, he, he has the height and reach uh, advantage over me. I think the key to, to this fight is going to get inside, you know, showing up that distance. Can't wait, looking forward to it, and good luck to you. Uh, we go back over here. Uh, hi, Łukasz Godlewski from Przegląd Sportowy Onet. I've got a question for Jake. Uh, you were in Poland uh, la last year for the Jus Usyk Dibua fight, uh, and uh, you said there that you've got a Polish heritage, but uh, I believe you've never s said what it's about. W what are the details? Yeah, my, uh, I'm like 30 or 20% Polish. Dad, what? 55% Polish, uh, um, and, which is why I started a, a, a hot dog company or, or a franchisee in a hot dog company. So shout out the dog house. But it, who is it? It's, it's my dad's side, and it's like our great grandmothers that uh, came over from Poland to the United States. So that's shout out to the Paul family. Thank you. All right. Uh, back over here, media. Hey, everybody. Chuck Creekmer from allhiphop.com. Um, a lot of us came up on Mike Tyson, millennials, Gen X, and obviously, you know, further back, like Muhammad Ali, et cetera, et cetera, Floyd Mayweather. Uh, Jake, you've resonated with Gen Alpha and Gen Z. Uh, from a boxing perspective, from a legacy perspective, what do you feel like you're bringing to the sport and the future of boxing? Yeah, man, just excitement, excitement big fights, big knockouts. You know, a lot of fighters go in there and they have boring ass fights like Floyd Mayweather and I've brought in up a lot of excitement to the sport, knocking people out in the biggest platforms possible, going against the biggest names and making matchups that the fans want to see, crossover MMA fights, things like that, fighting other massive names in the sport. So I'm going to continue to do the biggest fights, the biggest pay-per-views, the biggest streams across the board and just continue to push myself and I think people resonate with my content and just promotional ability. Thank you, my friend. Last one will be uh, from me, and I'll try my best. Let's see if this works out. I just want to go down the line from here to there, all the way down to there. Just give me a, a, give me a name, Jake or Mike. Prediction on Friday. We'll start with you, Shushu. No pressure. The baddest man on the planet. I am Mike Tyson. All right, that's one nothing. What about you, Lucas? Jake Paul. All right, 1-1. One, one. Shadeja. Jake Paul. All right, 2-1. Niraj. Mike Tyson. 2-2. Two, two. Mario. Iron Mike. 3-2 uh, for Mike. Amanda. Come on, Jake Paul. All right, 3-3. Three, three. Katie? You can never bet against a legend, Mike Tyson. 4-3, Mike. Abel. Tyson. 5-3, Mike. Winderson. Tyson. 6-3, Mike. Melinda. Tyson. 7-3, Mike. Mike Tyson. 8-3, Mike. Mike Tyson. Damn, Jake, the disrespect, it's palpable. I love it, I love it, you know? Hey, when I see dumb people saying dumb predictions, I, I just feel bad for them. So at the end of the day, who wants to bet on it, huh? Does anyone want to bet on it? 
I'm, I'm shaking hands. So how much we want to bet on this? You said, Mike, how much you want to bet? He said he's good. That's what I thought, bitch made. How much you want to bet? Mike Tyson. How much? How much you? How much? As you much as you're willing to lose, brother. So, okay, okay, so I'll give you my, my property How much? In India. How much? My property is like more than one million. I'll okay, give you. Okay, deal. Deal. How much you wanna bet? How much you wanna lose? Bro, you, I, I, the time I spend taking a shit is how much you make in your whole life, buddy. Oh. Shut the fuck up. How much you wanna lose? Whatever, whatever. A million dollars, deal. We got one million here, one million here. Okay. Come on, you guys wanna fucking do this? Put your money where your mouth is. How much money? Exactly. How much money? I don't speak English. Exactly. How much money? A ring. Deal. Let's go. I'm, I'm following up on all this shit. A million? A million? 20 bucks right here. That's what I thought. It goes down in two days' time, my friends. Once again, most valuable promotions, Netflix teaming up. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I forgot Katie Taylor back here. How much you want to bet? As much as you want. Yeah. I'm not losing. No shot in hell. Well, uh, do you want to bet your purse? Yeah, let's bet the purse. <laughs> oh, well, Deal. Yeah. Well played. Well played. And I'm sending out contracts, too. The stakes have just been raised. Tremendous stuff. Mike, Mike final word from you. Give, Give it to it us. Does. Dig deep. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah, yeah, final word to you, Mike. Fight. Final word to the world. Uh, I'm just ready to fight. Yeah, there he is. Iron Mike Tyson, everyone. We're going to take a little break. We're going to wrap this bad boy up. The Kisa Medarian is going to square them all up. Don't go anywhere. Friday, November 15th, AT&T Stadium. 280 million subscribers around the world. The most watched combat sports event of all time. We'll see you in two days. Oh my goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few days away and the energy is palpable. I'll tell you this, that press conference was something else. I wanna go right to you, Amir, because there's been a lot that's been said here today and you reached over to me right in the middle of that and said, there's something on your mind. Tell the people. I mean, I know him better than most people in the world. You know, people are fans of him, they, they admire him, but I know him personally, this is not good for Jake. The more he talks crap, the more he does this and trolls, the more he's gonna hurt him. Jake can't handle his power. I really think Jake's making a mistake doing that. Tyron, I looked at you halfway through and you looked at me and went, no, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I feel like I was on a trip for a year with seven luggages and now I gotta unpack. Right now, Mike Tyson is 50 degrees below zero, right? And Jake Paul is agitated. He feel disrespected. He's like, I put you on this car. I gave you this platform and you're going against me, right? I can't wait to see them square off here in a second. That one's gonna be I fun. think we should turn our seats around because I want to watch it. It's just so much. No one really wants to even talk. Mike Tyson said, I'm not going to lose. Young lady asks again. I said I'm not. I said the press conference is over with. That's it. Shut it down. Vince style, it's over. Wow. How about this? Jake said he's collecting contracts. I'm man. sweating. I think he did that to gain confidence in himself to be like, oh, it's eight to three. I want to make them make them feel like they made the wrong bet, wrong choice. But now nah, he gonna go up I was on that bet. Say, Tyrant no, knows. Unfortunately, he will absolutely follow up on that bet. That's gonna be real. I mean, the bet could be real. Bet that, mean that Katie go Taylor through. said a million. I heard three people said, say a million. Katie Taylor said your purse. Yeah. Yeah, three. He said his purse, which is we not even gonna get. We, 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 we're not counting. I know, but watch, watch, we ain't pocket watching. Bro, that's a mind game in itself. Of course, yeah. that's just all a mind game. Because like you said before, he's not getting in my dad's this head. This is the good. Point. That's that was the, that's what I saw. Head. Oh, it's not gonna work. I saw him oh, try to get into your father's head. He had the he, earpiece. He in. was Teflon. No, thank you. I'm here to fight. I did all the talking. Right. Yep. I think Jake got a bit agitated, a bit annoyed, right? A bit frustrated. So. Maybe this is a different fight that we may watch on Friday. That really hasn't ever happened to Jake. He's been able to kind of, you know, whether it was with you and, and you kind of gave him back and forth, but it wasn't, you know, he's really never been that agitated. Yeah. Where he got up and was like getting in people's face. Did you hear what he said to Mario Barrios? I was like, whoa, hold on a second. That's Mario Barrios. Everybody that thinks this is an exhibition and it's not a real fight, for everybody that's on They're the clueless. internet saying, They're oh, clueless. They think that. I dare you to watch this press conference and come back forth with that statement. This is a real fight, people. Absolutely. And then, 
we also had the undercard. We had people putting on their name. I thought everybody really gave a good account of themselves. Shushu was definitely doing his thing. He recited the whole thing. That was awesome. Yeah. But the co-main event, and again, you saw both fighters take a little bit of umbrage with some of the questions about how close that fight was. And Amanda Serrano talking about how, you know, she wanted the three minute, 12 rounds. I thought that yeah. was very interesting. What did you guys take away from that? I mean, they triple OGs in the sport. They don't have to talk trash. We've already seen the fight. They don't have to build it up. You can go and watch it. And I did. I would go and watch it again before you watch the fight on Friday. So you can see if they made improvements. They don't have to do all the jargon, right? So that's why they're smiling. They, they've already proved themselves. This is a treat for us. Absolutely. Did you guys see, by the way, go ahead, go ahead. In my here. opinion, like I said before, real boxers and real real fighters in general, they let the actions talk in the ring. You know, this is all Jake's, all, all that, all that, all those antics are all Jake <laughs> called again. Come back to Jake again. Man, going, sorry, people have to, though. I was though. dapped the forehead. It's all trying to get confidence in his head to feel like, yeah, I'm going to do it. He's yes. convincing himself. But, like, I my dad's not. You were a good kid. Bothering. You were a good kid, weren't you? Huh? You didn't get in trouble a lot as a kid. I didn't disobey. I guarantee you. I didn't, you did I didn't not. disobey. I know that. I guarantee I you, you did not. Listen, I don't want to disobey. I don't want to get in trouble with Mike right now either. And I know we're ready for our face offs. But before we get there, folks, it's going to be an exciting night on Friday. We can't wait. We know you're going to tune in. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Yo, listen, you hear that? Killers in the jungle. Run for them life. There's never been a night this Run big. Run for This is no ordinary fight. This is Jake El Gallo Paul. This may be it! Oh! Who's doing more than me? I'm the face of this sport. The disruptor. Versus Mike Tyson, the baddest man on the planet. Nobody could get close to me. I'm the best fighter in the world. This is the fight the world's been waiting for. What happens next? Only one way to know. Listen. Paul versus Tyson, Friday, November 15th, live on Netflix. All right, buckle up, friends. Face-off time. First, let us say hello to the man who put this whole event together, co-founder of Most Valuable Promotions, Nikisa Badarian, as well as the MVP, Ring Card Girls. All right, let's kick this off. Face-off number one, Bruce Carrington versus Dana Coolwell. Eight rounds in the featherweight division. Bruce Carrington of Brooklyn, New York, going up against Dana Coolwell of Beerwa, Australia. Thank you, gentlemen. Next up, 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Lucas Body versus Armando Casamonica. Lucas Body representing Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Armando Casamonica representing Rome, Italia. a 10-round fight for the vacant WBO World Super Middleweight title. It's Shadeja Green versus Melinda Watpool. 
Shadeja Green, hailing from Patterson, New Jersey, Melinda Wakpool from the six, Toronto, Canada. In the middleweight division, Niraj Goyat versus Winderson Nunez. Niraj Goyat representing Haryana, India, and Winderson Nunez of Sao Paulo, Brazil. undisputed queen at 140 pounds, the gold medalist, the Bray Bomber, Katie Taylor, versus the pride of Puerto Rico and New York, the seven division world champion, the unified featherweight champ, moving up, Amanda Serrano. The Bray Bomber versus the real deal, Taylor, Serrano, two. simulation, an actual fight that is going down in two days' time, hailing from the Catskills by way of Brownsville, Brooklyn, the baddest man on the planet, Iron Mike Tyson. And of course, going up against El Gallo, the one and only, the disruptor, Jake Paul. One last time, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. Serrano, Katie Taylor, these four athletes making history on Friday. What a collection of characters, of fighters. Here they are, Friday, only on Netflix, available worldwide, no subscription, no pay-per-view, no added cost, no nothing. If you subscribe, it's yours on Friday. And while we're up, Let's say hello one last time to all the fighters. 
competing on this historic card on Friday evening. All 14, come on up one last time for a photo op. Seven fights. Only on Netflix, the only place to watch this in two days. Again, no pay-per-view, no added cost. If you're a subscriber already, and let's be honest, who isn't? This is yours in 48 hours. Thank you so much. Appreciate you all watching. We'll see you tomorrow, right back here for the official weigh-ins. What a night, ladies and gentlemen. What a press conference, but that is all for us here at Toyota Music Factory. Another huge event happens right here tomorrow. The weigh-in will begin at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live for Most Valuable Promotions YouTube, Netflix YouTube, and Netflix to Noom. Do not miss the final face-off between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson and Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. For all of us, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you and good night.